In this lecture, we're gonna learn how to select, create, and delete elements with JavaScript. Now, the goal of this lecture is more to be like a quick reference for you in the future, because these methods that I'm gonna show you here are actually way more difficult to find and to understand from the MDN documentation. And so when you need some of these methods in the future, then all you have to do is to come back to this lecture and see how it works. And let's start by learning a little bit more about selecting elements. And I'm gonna start at the very top of any HTML document. So as you know, that is the document. And so actually we do have a special way of selecting the entire document of, well, of any web page, so of any document. And that's document element, all right? So just document here is not enough to select the document element because this is not the real DOM element, all right? So for example, if we want to apply CSS styles to the entire page, we always need to select document element. Okay, let's just take a look here in the console. And so indeed, that is now the entire HTML here. Okay, and we can also easily uh, select the head and body. So that's just head and dot body, as you can imagine. So this is not visible on the page, and the body is then also the entire uh, kind of visible uh, document, all right? So for these special elements, uh, we don't even need to write any selector. But otherwise, as you already know, we can use query selector. So that's nothing new. For example, we can select the header element just like this. And this will then return the first element that matches uh, this selector here. Now, if we want to select multiple elements, then we should use document.querySelectorAll. So again, we already used this one. And so here on this page, we have multiple elements with the section class. So basically each of these here are a section with the class of section, okay? And I will actually store this here in a variable because I want to show you something a little bit later. Okay. But as you know already, this will return a node list and then that will contain all of the elements that are a section. So that are selected by this selector. So these ones we have been using all the time and in fact, they are the most used uh, ways of selecting elements. Now, as you learned, hopefully from the previous lecture, these are available not only on the document here, like this, but also on all the elements, okay? And we actually use this a lot when we want to select child elements, as we will do a little bit later in this section, okay? Next, I think we also already talked about get element by ID. And so here we only pass the ID name itself uh, without the selector. So this section here has the ID section one. And so, yeah, we don't need the selector here. That's only for the query selector methods. All right. So I showed you this one because now there are also some others. So there are get elements and that's elements, so with an S, by tag name. And so let's say we want to get all the buttons. So all the elements with the name of button, basically. So let's actually store this also, all buttons, and then log it to the console. Let's give it some more space here. And so here now you see all the buttons that are on our page. Now, what I wanted to show you is that this method actually returns an HTML collection. So that's different from a node list because an HTML collection 
is actually a so-called live collection. And that means that if the DOM changes, then this collection is also immediately updated automatically. So for example, if I remove this button here, and I can do that by clicking inspect, and then that will select that button here, then all I need to do is to hit uh, delete. And then if I go back here to the console and try to read the all buttons again, then you see that we only have eight elements in here, while before we had nine, right? So that's something very important to keep in mind when you use this selector here, okay? And sometimes it's actually quite helpful to have an HTML collection like this, which updates automatically. Because of course, we can also delete elements from the DOM uh, programmatically, not just manually, like I just deleted this button here earlier. All right. Now the same does not happen with a node list. So if I take this whole section here and delete it, and if I then try to read all the sections, then I still have the same four elements here in the node list. And that's because this variable here was created by the time that this section still existed. And it didn't update itself as I deleted one of its elements. All right. So again, that's important to keep in mind. Okay. And finally, I also want to show you get elements by class name. So this is similar again to get element by ID and get elements by tag name. So here we can now specify a class name. So let's say button. And once again, we don't need the selector. So it's not a dot. It's simply the name of the classes. And this one will also return a live HTML collection. So just as I explained you earlier. Okay. So this is how we select elements. Selecting elements. Once of these you already knew. So basically these two more modern ones, but these ones also have a place. So this one and this one, in case that you really need uh, an HTML collection, which in some situations is useful, but most of the time uh, I simply keep using query selector and query selector all. Okay. Next up, let's talk about creating and inserting elements. Now we can create HTML elements using the insert adjacent HTML function that we used before in the Bankist application. Remember? So we used insert adjacent HTML to uh, create movements, right? And this is a quick and easy way of creating elements that I really like a lot and use the most actually. So please go back to the Bankist application and remember exactly how it works. All right. So I don't need to talk about this one here again, and I will instead focus on some other ways of creating elements because sometimes it's more useful to actually build the element a bit more from scratch, like more programmatically using a combination of some other methods. So let's see how, and then it will all make sense. Okay. So let's use document.createElement. Okay. And then here we need to pass in the string of basically the tag name. So I want to create a div here now. And so this will return a DOM element that we can then uh, save somewhere. And I'm calling this one message. And I will explain why in a second. Okay. So again, this here creates a DOM element and then stores that element into the message. Now that element is not yet anywhere in our DOM. All this is, is a DOM object that we can now use to do something on it, but it is not yet in the DOM itself. So it's nowhere to be found on our web page here. Okay. If we want it on the page, then we need to manually insert it into the page. But first let's uh, actually do something with it. So for example, we can add classes 
And so now this is like any other selection that we have, okay? So if we have an element in our DOM and select it, for example, using query selector here, like this, then the result is also a DOM object that we can use in our code. And this here is now just the same. It's just an object that represents a DOM element. And so, just like before, we can use, for example, class list on it. So class list, and then we can add, and I will add a class called cookie message. And that's because here we will now programmatically build an element which will display a small cookie message on the bottom of the screen. So I'm sure you've seen these uh, on all web pages these days. They are quite annoying. So let me search here for cookie. And here you go. So this is the class that I created for this cookie message. And so this is the one we are adding now to our newly created element. Okay, let's get rid of this here. And now we can keep going. So for example, we can uh, add text into the element. And as always, we do that using text content. So let's just say we use cookies for improved functionality and analytics, something like that. Analytics. Okay, so this inserts simply text, uh, but of course we can also insert uh, HTML. And so that is then inner HTML, which we also already used before. And remember that we can use both of these properties to read and to set content, okay? And so here, let's now write uh, a string of HTML. So let's copy this, and then we can also like add a button. Okay, I'm missing the colon here. So let's add a button element. Okay, so I'm just writing some HTML here. This doesn't matter, just copy uh, this code. All right, it's just so that it will have uh, the correct formatting then based on the CSS that I wrote before. So this will basically just uh, display a nicely formatted button saying, got it. Okay, but anyway, we now have this element and all we have to do now is to insert it into our DOM. And let's do that here in our header. So give it some more space. So all of this here is our header element. So this takes up so much space. Can't get rid of it for some reason. So all of this is our header. And so we can now select this header and then append our message to that element. And we already have that here. Let's call this the header. And now we can say header.prepend. And now, indeed, here it is. So here is our message. So maybe you saw it being added here. So indeed, it's now also really in our DOM. Now, for some reason, I think this doesn't look quite right. Well, maybe it does. So what matters here is that we just inserted this element really into our HTML. So right into our DOM. So prepending basically adds the element as the first child of this element. Okay. But we can also add it as the last child. And so that is uh, append. So header dot append message. And watch what happens now. So now we see that it's really appended. So it's the last child. So it's gotta be, yeah, it's here. Now, what we see here is that the element was actually only inserted once. Now that's because this element here, so message, is now indeed a live element living in the DOM. And so therefore 
it cannot be at multiple places at the same time. It's just like a person that also cannot be at two places simultaneously, right? So what happened here is that we first prepended the element and then we appended it. And what this append did here was to basically move the element from being the first child to being the last child. All right, so basically it moved the element and didn't really insert it because it was already inserted here by prepend. So what this means is that we can use the prepend and append methods not only to insert elements, but also to move them. And again, that is because a DOM element is unique. So it can always only exist at one place at a time. But now what if we actually wanted to insert multiple copies of the same element? Well, in that case, we actually would have to first copy the first element. So let's comment out this part here and say header dot append. And then instead of appending the message directly, we first clone it. So that's clone node. And then we need to pass in true or we can pass in true, which simply means that all the child elements will also be copied. And so now, as you see, we get the same cookie message in both places. But usually this is not what we want. So let's actually only append it. So having it here at the bottom where it makes the most sense. Now to finish, there are actually two more methods and that is before and after. And as the name says, this one will insert the message before the header element. So as a sibling and this one here after the header element. So also as a sibling. Let's just get rid of this so we can see it here before. And so now it's actually uh, really before the header. So first a cookie message and then the header, but they are siblings. And now the same here, it's now after the header. So we have the whole header and then we have this cookie element. All right, so that is how we create and insert elements programmatically. And now to finish, let's also delete elements, okay? So what I'm gonna do is to remove this element uh, when we click this button. So let's select this button and then as we click it, uh, remove the message. So document dot query selector, and we gave it the class of a button close cookie, right? And then add event listener And now all we have to do is message dot remove. And again, here we don't have to select the message element again because we already have it in memory. So we already have it stored in a variable. So there's no need to run a document dot query selector. Of course we could do it and it would work as well. So we could select the element with the class of cookie message. But again, that's not necessary because we already have it stored in memory. Okay, and so if I click this, then it's gone. All right, it's nowhere to be found now. Now this remove method here is actually very recent. Before this method existed, all we could do was to remove child elements. And so back then we had to select the parent element first and then remove the child from there. So that would look like this. So message, and then we would move up in the DOM tree, remove child. And then again, the name of the element that we want to uh, remove. So this is a bit cumbersome, but again, this is how we used to do it. And I'm sure you will see this in some code bases because uh, many people also don't yet know about this newer way of doing things. And by the way, uh, this way of moving up and down in the DOM tree 
like selecting the parent element is called DOM traversing, and there is a whole lecture on that uh, a bit later in this section. Let's just see if this works as well, and indeed it does. So this is how we select, create, insert, and delete elements. And to make this 100% complete, just make sure that you review the insert adjacent HTML method as well that we used before in the Bankist application.